My name is Sam Hendrick. I work for Bentley Systems. And in this series of videos, we're going to be going through how to work in a 3D world with MicroStation Connect Edition. Now, during this series of videos, I'm going to be popping in and out to help emphasize certain things that I consider important that you might need to know. Now, when you launch MicroStation for the very first time, you may see the welcome page. On the welcome page, there's some good things that you may want to take a look at. In the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see view examples. This is some tutorial stuff. Strongly encourage you to take a look. In the center section is going to be learning content, and in the upper right, you're going to see news and announcements. This is an RSS feed. Now, what you really want to do is get started. So we want to get into a 3D file. So on the right side of the screen, you're going to see a half circle with an arrow. This lets us start a work session. So we're going to go ahead and click that. This is going to take us to the project page. Now on the project page, you're going to see in the upper left corner, workspace and work sets. Now MicroStation ships with an example workspace, and we also have a work set called Metro Station. I'm going to be using one of the files in there to illustrate. So we're going to open up a file. It's called Platform. Now this is a 3D file, so we're going to go ahead and click and open this. Now, at this point, I'm going to disappear magically, but I'll be coming back again just to help you learn more about MicroStation in a 3D world. And now we're going to be opening up our file. The file's called platform.dgn. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And this is going to be opening up our 3D file in MicroStation Connect Edition. Now, the fact that we're in a 3D file somewhat obvious because you see our project in an isometric or user-defined rotation. I want to point out that we have three different views open. I've got view number one, which is a user-defined rotation, and then view number two, which is a left, and then view number three, which is a right. Having multiple views open when working in 3D is a great thing to do. Pro tip. Now, next thing we're going to talk about is how do we navigate around in a 3D file? If you're comfortable with icons and a lot of people like them, I'm going to go to my view number one, I'm going to go to my rotate view on the view controls, and I'm going to slide on down and choose open as a toolbox. Now there's some icons that are fairly representative of what they do. The first icon is rotate view. When I click on this, looking at my tool settings window, you can see I have the method set to dynamic. The other methods, most of them, except three points, are all standard rotations. So I'm going to leave it set to dynamic. I'm going to move my cursor back into view number one, and I'm just going to data anywhere, and you're going to see a little plus sign show up, and this happens to be down here at the bottom. And you can see as I move my cursor around, I'm rotating about that point. Now, if that's not the point that I want to rotate about, I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. I can change this by returning to the tool, and then I can do a tentative on a point, and then do a data, and now I'm going to be able to place this any place I want. So I'm going to move my cursor right about here. I'm going to do a data, and now that's the pivot point. So I'm going to click, and now I can rotate my view about this point. Now there's other ways to rotate the view quickly using your mouse and your keyboard. We're going to first look at some of the other options. So I'm going to rotate it around the way I want it. I do a data, and there it is. I'm going to hit reset. That gets me back to my previous command. Now, some of the other methods you can rotate the view to. So, for example, there's top. I'm going to choose top. This rotates my active view to the top. I'm going to choose isometric. This rotates my view around to the isometric orientation. Now, there is a view previous here, so I can go back and see the previous orientations. Now, there are other ways for you to navigate around using just your mouse and partly your keyboard. On your mouse, if you hold the wheel down, and this depends upon how your organization or you personally have configured your mouse, if I hold the wheel down, I am in pan. And this allows me to just dynamically pan around on my screen. And if I double click the wheel, that's fit view. Now, if I wanted to rotate the view, what I can do is I can do a tentative. This is, again, a pro tip where I want to pivot about. So let's say I want to pivot about this point right here. I'm going to do a tentative. I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard, and then I'm going to hold the wheel down on my mouse. And you can see I'm pivoting or rotating about that point. That makes it very convenient. Shift, hold the wheel down. So by just panning and rotating, 
You also can scroll the wheel to zoom in and out, a very obvious method for doing that. That's basic navigation. Next thing we're going to look at is how do we draw in a 3D world? Well, this is going to require us to understand a little bit about AccuDraw, one of my personal favorite features. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit on this area. And you'll notice that I've got a north arrow. Now I place this in the file so that we know which way is true north. Now AccuDraw is currently docked down at the bottom of my screen here. You can see there's an X and there's a Y and there's a Z. You'll only see the Z if you're in a 3D file. If you're in a 2D file, you'll just see X and Y. Now I'm going to use the Play Smart line and I'm going to bring that up by hitting the space bar on my keyboard. And then I get the pop-up menu. And right up here is the option for placement tools. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to go to Play Smart line. Now I'm going to start my line right at the corner of this object by doing a data. Now you're going to see the compass appear and right now I'm in rectangular coordinate system. This is X and Y and the compass will tell me that because it shows up as a square. If I wanted to do distance and angle or what we call polar, I would switch by hitting the letter M and this would switch my compass from X and Y or rectangular to polar distance and angle. And you can see this reflected down on the AccuDraw window. I'm going to hit the letter M again and go back to rectangular. Now my compass is currently oriented or flat to my monitor or my screen or my view, however you want to look at this. It's generally not how you want to draw. So I want to rotate the compass around and what my job is to basically draw a shape using the Play Smart Line tool, and I want to make it planar to this slab to the left. Well, to rotate the compass around, there's several ways you can do this. I can hit the letter T for top, and that's going to rotate the compass to the design file's true north or top orientation. You can see the compass's green tick mark lines up with the north arrow. The compass's red tick mark, that's the design file's positive X. Now, if I hit the letter F, this will rotate the compass to the front orientation. And if I hit the letter S, this rotates it to the design file's side orientation. So I'm going to hit T for top again here. Now, being in a rotated project area, you can see north is true north, and our project isn't perfectly orthographic to north. So this is most common in projects drawn coordinate correct. What I want to do is I want to line my compass up so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and I want to line that AccuDraw compass up so that I can draw flat to this slab or planar. So I'm going to use a two letter shortcut. It's the letters R E. These are AccuDraw shortcuts. When I type them in the tool settings window in the upper right corner, you're going to notice currently says play smart line. When I type in R E, this is going to suspend whatever tool I'm in and then put me in the rotate AccuDraw compass by element. So I'm going to type in RE. You can see I'm no longer in place smart line that has been suspended. Watch my AccuDraw compass as I move my cursor over the existing element. You can see as I move it over the sides, you can see the compass begins to change orientation based upon where on the solid that I'm lining up with. So I'm going to move it along the edge so that it lines up along that edge. I'm going to do a data to accept it. And now my compass is rotated to be planar and lined up. Its x-axis is lined up with the edge of that slab. Now I'm going to move my cursor down this direction. And I'm going to go a distance of 5. So I'm going to type in 5. And you can see the compass moves out. Now there is a feature called axis indexing. As I get close to the axis, it's like a gravitational pull. It'll just snap to that. If I move it away, I'm still constrained at 5, but you can see there's dotted lines right here. As I move it out here, I'm indexed on this axis. Now I've constrained the distance. I'm just going to do a data to accept it. The compass goes to the other end. Now my next task is going to be to draw a line straight out in this direction, but the length of that segment should be defined by this point over here. And as you can see, as I move my cursor over here, it just snaps to that point. That's not what we want. What I want to do is lock it on an axis. Now I'm going to move my cursor in this quadrant near the green tick mark or the compass's Y axis and I'm going to on my keyboard hit the enter key. And When I do that you see it jumps to that axis nearest my cursor. Uh, to unlock it I hit enter again 
and I've unlocked it. I'm going to lock it, hitting enter. I'm now locked on that axis to define the length of that segment. I'm going to slide my cursor on up to this point here. You can see the dotted line gives me visual verification. I'm going to data segment drawn. Now I have points that represent the other length segments or segment lengths. I'm going to data there and I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to do a data here. And there's my shape. Now this is not a solid yet. It's just a planar shape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using some 3D tools to be able to modify my shape. Okay, now I've been working basically using the drawing workflow in the upper left hand corner. You can see where it says drawing. This is my workflow. Workflow determines what tools show up on the ribbon. The ribbon is right down here. You are probably all familiar with it from other Microsoft Office products. Right now, my workflow is set to drawing. So the assumption is I'm doing 2D work. If I click on the workflow option, you'll see there's three other options. I've got modeling, visualization, and task navigation. I want to choose modeling. And when I do this, watch the ribbon change. You can see now I have solids, surfaces, mesh, content, things like that. Now, I'm going to choose solids. And you can see here, I've got a number of different tools here. Oh, okay. Let's pause for a moment. Time out. I just mentioned changing the workflow from drawing to modeling. And I mentioned that it changes what's on the ribbon. But what I didn't tell you is it does so much more. And I want to expand upon that. So I've got a little tiny insert. I'm going to pop it in right now. I want to take a moment and go a little bit deeper into workflows. Changing the workflow from drawing to modeling doesn't just change the ribbon across the top. It affects other things. Let's take a look at this. Right now, my workflow is set to drawing. If I bring the pop-up menu up by hitting the space bar, if I go to something like placement, what you're going to see on that pop-up is primarily for 2D. If I hit the space bar again and I go to the modify, the modify tools are going to be 2D modify tools. I'm now going to go and change my workflow from drawing to modeling. Let's see how that affects the pop-up menu. I'm going to hit the space bar. Let's go to placement again. You'll notice that I have 3D tools available to me. Again, I'll go to the space bar. This time I'm looking at modify. And you're going to see the modify tools here, here for 3D. So changing your workflow has deeper ramifications than just the ribbon across the top. Well, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? I really like that. MicroStation knows based on your workflow what to show up on the pop-up menu. This is pretty cool stuff. How it's doing this is something called named expressions. Named expressions have been around in MicroStation for a long time. If you've been using it, you may not have been aware of it. Matter of fact, I should probably do a video on this. Oh, wait a minute, I think I already did. It's on YouTube, you should check it out. Now, back to our regular scheduled programming. That extrude, extrude along. I can draw in, put a hole in an object, things like that. We also have our basic primitives. So what my job is here is to take this shape and to extrude it. So what I'm going to do is click on the extrude tool. On my tool settings window, I have options to use my active attributes. If I don't check that, then my solid is going to be the same attributes as my shape that I start with. You also have an option to keep the original. This is something you might want to do. Oftentimes when you extrude something, the shape that you're extruding it from, you may find that you need to change that shape. If you don't have the shape there, the original kind of makes it tough. You also can define the distance and the thickness here. So what I'm going to do is just select this. I'm going to click on this. You'll notice the AccuDraw compass appears and it orientates itself perpendicular to my, my shape. So I'm going to slide my cursor up. Now I can type in a distance at this point if I want to using AccuDraw or I can move my cursor over here and I can find an existing point and I can just do a data and now I've got a slab represented right there. Now to modify my slab, we have over here, modify solid tool. I can go ahead and select this 
It wants me to identify the solid that I want to modify. But to take a quick look at our tool settings window, I'm going to come over here. I've got three options here. This is modify face, which allows me to just modify a face of the solid. This one is modify edge. And then the last one is modify a vertex. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say modify face. I'm going to select and say modify face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to select the solid. And you can see as I move my cursor around, you can see it highlights different areas. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And as I move my cursor up, I'm taking that face and extruding it up. And again, I can type in a distance or I can select an existing point, which I'm going to do, do a data and there's my solid, I extruded it up. So that's the basics right there. We're gonna be covering more and additional videos following up. Now what we're gonna do is take a quick look at display styles, how we're seeing our model displayed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a fit view. And to change your display style, there's a couple of ways to do this. If you go to your view attributes, which is right up here, I click on that, you can see display styles is listed right here. This is one way for me to change it, and it is per view. The other way to do this, dismiss that, is there's display style set right there. If I click that, then the options for it are appearing on my tool settings window. And you've got a number of different options. For example, there's hidden line, hidden line realistic. We also have some other options like um, thematic height, which is great for doing contours and surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to see this hidden line realistic. I'm going to click in the view. And now what I'm seeing is basically a hidden line of my model. There's lots of other options. There's uh, what I had it set to was illustration. Let's choose illustration with shadows. Again, I select that. I click in the view and now you can see it's back to what it was. So that's a basic introduction to display styles. And this is a design file setting, so if you do change the display style, make sure that you save your settings if you want it to remain that way. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.